Hello everyone and welcome to my latest SQL Server Quickie. I know it's already a very long time ago since I have published my last SQL Server Quickie, but beginning with this year I want to continue uh, with that idea and publish on a regular basis SQL Server Quickies. Today I want to talk about a very interesting technology that Microsoft introduced back with SQL Server 2017 support for docker containers. Now you might be asking what is a docker container? Well, a docker container is a very light wide virtualization technology that was first introduced uh, in Linux and now we also have docker support on all the other major operating systems like Windows and also Mac OS. And since SQL Server 2017 you are now able to run our traditional SQL Server inside a docker container. And therefore you have the possibility to run SQL Server also on, on other operating systems like Linux and also on Mac OS. As you might know, I'm working on a regular basis on Mac OS, on Apple hardware, and in combination with Docker, I'm also able to run a full-blown installation of SQL Server on my MacBook Pro without the use of a large virtual machine. As you will see later, a Docker container is a very, very light, wide, container and inside that container we are able to run our traditional Windows based SQL Server. So let's switch now over uh, to PowerPoint and in the first step I just want to describe you what a Docker container is and what are the advantages over a full-blown virtual machine that you know already for years. Let's talk now about the basics about Docker. In the first step, I want to describe to you why Docker is so powerful. As I've said previously in the introduction, in the past when I wanted to run SQL Server on Mac OS, for example, I always had to install a full-blown Windows-based virtual machine. This took a lot of time. You need to patch that machine, means Microsoft provides every month updates, means you have to download them, you have to install them, you have to cross your fingers that afterwards everything is working as expected. And also very, very important, you also have to license that virtual machine. This is also very, very important. So I have done in the past a lot of work just to be able to run SQL Server. It doesn't matter if I wanted to run SQL Server on Mac OS or even traditionally on Windows. Every time when I installed SQL Server, I installed a complete virtual machine so that SQL Server can be isolated from everything else. And now with Docker, my life, and trust me also your life, will be very, very easy. The idea about Docker is, as I've said previously, that you have a light wide Docker container. It means inside that Docker container you are just running one specific application. That application can be a web server, maybe an application that you have developed in-house, or in our case, we are running SQL Server in a Docker container. And as you can see, inside that Docker container, you are not virtualizing your operating system anymore. No, you are not virtualizing your operating system because the Docker container is running on your host operating system. This means when you are running Docker on Windows, your Docker containers are using the Windows operating system. When you are running Docker on Linux, your Docker containers will use Linux. And if we are running Docker on Mac OS, like in my case, we are just using 
Mac OS as a base operating system. So this is also very, very important. You have just your base operating system, so the operating system on which you are running Docker, and that operating system is just used for all your Docker containers. So it doesn't matter how many Docker containers you are spinning up, how many Docker containers you are running, you are just using the OS of your host the machine on which you are running a uh, Docker. Means you only have to license your OS once and you also have to patch your, uh, your OS just once. Means in my case I just have to patch Mac OS or in your case maybe you're just patching once Windows or once Linux and afterwards yeah, you're just running SQL Server inside your Docker container. So this is very very powerful and very very cool because it's just introducing less overhead. Let's talk now how you can work with Docker. When you have installed Docker on your host operating system, you get a command line tool called Docker and with that one you can work against uh, the Docker environment. In the first step we need a so-called Docker image. So all the major software vendors like Microsoft, VMware and so on, they provide you a so-called Docker registry and inside that Docker registry they have Docker images which you can download. So in our case Microsoft provides us Docker images for all SQL Server versions beginning with SQL Server 2017. So the Microsoft Container Registry provides you Docker images for SQL Server 2017, SQL Server 2019 and SQL Server 2022 which was just released a few weeks ago. So let's download now the Docker image for SQL Server 2022. So you use here the docker pull command, you specify the image, in our case we specify the SQL Server 2022 latest image from the Microsoft Container Registry. In my case I have already downloaded that image, so as you will see uh, our image is just up to date. You can use for example the docker image ls list command and that command just tells you which images you have already downloaded on your host operating system. So as you can see I have here a docker image for SQL Server 2022, SQL Server 2019 and I have also other docker images, for example docker images that I have created for working with service broker. I have here another one which is also for SQL Server and I have here another one uh, in which I'm doing my whole uh, operating system development stuff. So we have now that Docker image in front of us and you can think about that Docker image like an ISO image that you have downloaded and the past from Microsoft. So now we have to install that Docker image and installing in the context of Docker just means that you're spinning up a new Docker container. And you can spin up a new Docker container with the docker one command. As you can see, we give that Docker container a name. In our case, we call it just SQL Server 2022. We specify the Docker image that we want to use, so the latest image of SQL Server 2022 that we have downloaded previously. Then we do a so-called board mapping, so we are just telling Docker that the board 1433 inside the Docker container should be mapped to the board 1433 on my host operating system. So when we are run now that Docker container, you can connect to SQL Server with the NetBIOS name localhost because on localhost the board 1433 will be forwarded to that specific Docker container. 
and in addition we have to specify some environment variables. So in the context of SQL Server we have to accept the end user license agreement and of course we also have to specify an SA password because otherwise you wouldn't be able to connect to SQL Server. So let's run now that command and as you can see we have spinned up now a docker container. You can also see that docker container with the ps command which shows you all the running uh, docker containers. We use the dash a for all docker containers and now we can see that that docker container SQL Server 2022 is just up and running for 15 seconds. So let's connect now to that SQL Server instance. I'm using here Azure Data Studio. Azure Data Studio is also a lightweight version of SQL Server Management Studio, which just runs also an on every major operating system. So like Windows here, but Azure Data Studio also runs on Linux and also on Mac OS. So when I'm working on Mac OS, I'm mostly using Azure Data Studio to connect to SQL Server, which is running in a Docker container on Mac OS. So let's connect now to localhost. You see, server name is localhost. And we have to specify now, of course, a login. So we're just logging in with the SA service account and we specify the password that we have specified previously in the environment variables. So as you can see, we have now a connection to SQL Server and of course this is a fresh installation of SQL Server means you just have the system databases there. Of course you can also copy backups into the Docker container and, the, and then you can do a restore. Let's do a select add add version and as you can see we are now running SQL Server 2022, the RTM version of SQL Server, developer edition on Linux means in the background Docker on Windows also uses the Linux based SQL Server to run it inside a Docker container. We have now that Docker container up and running means you can now create databases, you can create tables inside the databases, you can insert data and afterwards when you don't need that Docker container anymore you can do a docker stop command. This just stops the Docker container. Let's do that. So our Docker container is now in the stopped state as you can also see in a few seconds with the docker bs command. So our docker is now in the exited status. It's very important that docker container is still there. It's just stopped. Means when we now need that docker container again we do a docker start command and again we specify just the name of the docker container means a docker container is now up and running again. As you will see, it's up and running. We are able to do a select at that version. When we do again a docker stop command, it's in the stopped state. And when you completely want to discard that container, so you just want to remove your whole SQL Server installation, we do a docker remove command. We specify the name of our docker container, SQL 2022, and now we're just removing it. Means when we do now a docker bsa command, you see all our docker containers are gone. Means when you have created some databases inside the docker container, you are also losing that. You are also losing them. So don't forget to back them up. Another possibility would be to work with docker volumes because with docker volumes you can persist your data that you are storing for example in databases outside of the context of your docker container but docker volumes are today for that SQL Server wiki are just out of scope. Today I wanted I just wanted to give you here a short overview how you can work with SQL Server in Docker containers. 
In today's SQL Server Quickie, I have shown you how you can work with SQL Server in combination with Docker. As you have seen, the installation and the working with SQL Server inside a Docker container is a very, very easy task and can be accomplished just in a few seconds. I hope that you have learned today a lot about Docker in combination with SQL Server and if you want to know more about that very very interesting technology I highly recommend to check out my online course about SQL Server on Linux, Docker and Kubernetes where I will also talk more about advanced options like uh, Docker volumes that I have mentioned previously. So thank you for watching just leave me a comment how you like that SQL Server Quickie and we will see each other very, very soon with a new topic. Stay tuned and thank you.